Well, you'll be glad to hear I'm not going to give a lecture on uh, dead weight. <laughs> okay, um, I want to speak maybe to some of the researchers uh, in the audience and on behalf of the people who worked on this uh, project, the team. For a moment, imagine uh, tackling the grand challenges of something like uh, energy sustainability or improving surgical techniques to reduce patient recovery times or working on policies, economic and social policies that will improve recovery in the economy or at another level uh, working on something that will improve the quality of people's lives in developing countries. Well you don't need to imagine this because there's UL researchers in this room, my very colleagues, who work on these things every day and for them this is very real indeed. All of the issues uh, that I've spoken or all the examples that I've given, they're all very, very different. But they all have two key things in common. Firstly, they're underpinned by excellent research. And secondly, they have impact in the real economy, in, in real society and on real people's lives. When Mary asked me to get involved in this project, uh, I was delighted to do so for two key reasons. Uh, first, it got me out of the Kemi Business School. Um, no, firstly, it was an opportunity to work with colleagues across the four faculties of the University of Limerick. And in our true academic, nerd-like fashion, we looked around at methodologies for a long time, and we came up that the, the case study methodology was a good way to begin to have this discussion about translating the impact of our research. And very early on in the process, we learned that the key to dealing with the real grand challenges of a society, ranging from things like cancer research to uh, climate change to all of these issues, is to stop our disciplinary conversations for a moment, or to at least to pause them and to tackle these grand challenges in collaborative ways. And this collaborative approach lies at the core of the impact case study methodology we are showcasing here today. We all talk about collaboration, but what does it really mean? For me, it's about questioning. Often we are conditioned to answer rather than to evaluate the question asked and who we are directing it to. For us researchers, I also think it's important that we don't, always don't look to our own disciplines for all of the answers all of the time. There's much we can learn from our partners in industry, in our communities, and from our interactions with policymakers, and indeed our researchers outside of our own disciplines. The second reason that I embrace the notion of being involved in this project is that from the outset, we decided that all, everything should be clearly evidence-based and that it should also be underpinned by excellent research. And this was something that all of us researchers felt comfortable with in the University of Limerick because I think excellence and relevance is very much part of our DNA here at the University of Limerick. For me personally, there's no better buzz as a researcher than the feeling you get when, you're in, when your research impacts on the real world. I have been privileged to experience this rewarding feeling on a number of occasions and can honestly say that it provides me with a real sense of satisfaction and worth as an academic. As I speak here today, I speak not only in a personal capacity, but on behalf of the fantastic team of case study writers with whom I work to develop these case studies. I'm only one voice in a chorus of people who've worked on this project and will continue to work on this project. So, coming back to the researchers in the audience, what did we, the researchers, learn from this project that may be helpful to our fellow researchers in the audience? Well, today we have four key, key takeaway messages. Firstly, the first question to ask yourself is, what happened that would not have happened in the absence of the research? So it's very much an ex post approach, looking back. What happened that would not have happened in the absence of your research? Making an impact is not just about disseminating research. It's crucial to demonstrate a clear link between the research and the impact and to highlight the reach and significance of that impact. But now that we've the case studies done and we're going to do more of them, I set us another challenge as the research community. And that is, 
I'd like if we could start engaging in what I refer to as impact by design. So what that means is you take very much an ex post perspective along, along some of the lines we've been hearing uh, from Mark earlier on. It's not easy, but it's about thinking about mapping our impact from the outset. It's about developing a research impact pathway for your research, or a type of logic model, where you start from what your research would look, what it looks like, but then you think about what are going to be your impacts in the short term, the intermediate and the long term. What that really involves is engaging your user community from the outset, not at the end, but from the very outset. And considering an entire impact pathway before starting a research a project might lead us to reconsider some elements of the approach. And really interesting pathways, one thing I can definitely say is they're not linear. We often present these logic models like as if they're linear. They're much more systemic in nature. They're much more evolutionary in nature than this. And they're not easy. But I think we should really uh, try to do this. The third thing I would say is that, and David spoke about this earlier on, engaging in a research impact agenda opens doors and exposes our researches to audiences we may never have considered had we just stuck to our own comfortable disciplinary discussions. But we do need to think about how we communicate with these user communities. Sadly, not many people read our research papers. Um, so we need to think about how we communicate with the user communi community and how we involve them early on. And the final lesson that we as a group learned was you should think about the story of your research. I think we're creatures of narrative and that's why I think the case study methodology works very well. And the best impact case studies that I've seen tell a really nice story. We are showcasing four very different case studies here today. And hopefully you've had a, had a chance to engage with these on the way in and with the people who made these possible. For me, the case studies highlight that impacts can come in many different shapes and forms. And this is one of the key things that I learned uh, from engaging with the researchers. If you think about it from the moment, let's look at how diverse they are. One of the case studies looks at the question of how to treat chronic back pain. I think, that, I think that's uh, quite amazing. Another one looks at supporting innovation through collaboration in the pharmaceutical sector, the SSPC one, which we've just heard about. Yet another one from my colleagues in the Kemi Business School looks at understanding the landscape of multinational corporations in Ireland. Whilst the final, final one is really fascinating, I think, because it talks about giving real people like ourselves and people in our communities a voice in politics. And what I loved about this project is that it wasn't just about one faculty, it's about all of the faculties, and we can all, it shows that we can all have impact. When you engage with these case studies and the people who made them possible, you, can, you will notice that impact can and should be broadly defined to include social, economic, cultural, environmental, health and quality of life benefits. In finishing, I'd like to circle back to the point I made about collaboration. The case studies showcased here today are only the first step in us further, further building a culture of research impact here at the University of Limerick. Our ambition is to see our research reach beyond UL. We'd like to see it reach around the globe and impact every facet of society. As researchers, we know we can't have this impact on our own. We need the involvement and collaboration of everybody in the audience here today. If you would like to see our research continue to make an impact beyond academia, we'd really like if you could become our impact partners and champions. And finally, here at the University of Limerick, we talk about being pioneering and connected. I think it's fair to say there's an ethos of achieving things against the odds here at the University of Limerick. Uh, I've worked here for 20 years. I was about four when I started. But <laughs> One, one thing I have noticed is that, you know, we, have, we can really make things happen around here. 
And at times, and working with the great team that I did with on these case studies, I think sometimes there's a little bit of a quiet revolution going on that we need to shout about a little bit more. So in terms of research impact, there is an opportunity for us to build on our pioneering ethos. Our research community are well placed to be leaders in this field. We can create that culture of impact, but we can't do it on our own, and everybody in this room has a role to play in that. Thank you very much.